The first talk we'll be talking about. The first talk we'll be talking about today is uh, using FME to transform Survey One Two Three data. Oh, that's the wrong button. There we go. By a show of hands, who here feels they have too much work, or rather, too much repetitive work to do on a day-to-day -day basis? Not as much as I thought. Wow, you guys are spoiled. At the onset of a new project, the question we often find ourselves asking is how do I get from start to finish in the simplest and most efficient way? In short, what will accomplish the task with the least amount of effort? As Thomas Edison once said, there's a way to do it better, find it. This is precisely what Jeff Purie of Tensing USA set out to accomplish when instructed by his client to create a system in one application and have the data be readily accessible and usable in another. Jeff Purie's client had requested a platform that could be integrated into their internal QC procedures to monitor day-to-day -day activities. The client had requested end-use data to be utilized in Microsoft Power BI for visualization to better inform business decisions in day-to-day -day operations. The client also requested spatial data to be readily accessible for spatial analysis and visualization in a master repository that is continuously updated. Now Jeff Purie, who was the primary consultant dele delegated to the creation of this system, had one question to answer. How do I get data from A to B regularly while maintaining maximum efficiency. Boom, FME is the answer. <laughs> now, before we get into the logistics of this project, it should be noted that Jeff had very minimal FME experience at the onset of this project. He had recently installed FME and thought what better way to learn than to use FME in a project. Thus, the system he created was a teach me project, so to speak, a chance to test FME's capabilities in a real world scenario. Now for the project, the data that was to be collected and used was going to be gathered via sur Survey123 for ArcGIS. To give some background, Survey123 is an application for smartphones that allows the user to create, configure, and publish forms that can then be filled out by any individual who has the application installed and access to the form, generally through an organizational account. Survey123 removes the need for external devices for data collection. By a show of hands, how many people do not have a smartphone? Yes. <laughs> the data collected involved three different surveys. Uh, a work log which contained the date, the site location, and whether or not the entry was new or an updated feature. A time card, which included the employee's name, the hours they worked, the tasks they performed, and the materials that were consumed performing those tasks. And lastly, a materials list, which included the type of material, the quantity of the material, and the cost. Now, one of the draw drawbacks of Survey123 is that the data is stored uh, in ArcGIS Online, and no edits can be made to the data unless performed via an ArcGIS application. This is where FME comes into play. FME is able to extract the data from ArcGIS Online and transform it to how the user desires and load it into the specified formats. In this case, an Excel sheet and a file geodatabase are the end goal formats. Uh, due to real life complications of, coll of data collection using a smartphone, the data is often not in the preferred or perfect format. Wouldn't it be nice if it was? <laughs> This is generally attri attributed to user error. However, the application allows for some customization to better enhance the user's experience and thus the data integrity as a whole. For example, the time section of the form required the user to select the time in hour minute format using a little scroll wheel. This caused many users to have difficulties and increased the frustration among the employees. This is also not ideal as it increased the amount of time required to fill out the forms. As, and the reason this increased the time is the client was, had to uh, round the time to the nearest 15 minute interval and using a small scroll wheel was not ideal. Uh, as such, the date and time were broken up into three separate fields, uh, one for the date, one for the hour, and one for the minute. Should the client have requ requested a higher degree of precision, a fourth field could have been added uh, for seconds. With the splitting of these fields, it only makes sense that they, these need to be brought back together. So as such, some string concatenation is required to bring the fields back together to be acceptable by Excel and Esri's date time formats. Um, this was also the case for the uh, task section. The task included predefined tasks as well as a other field. The reason for this is it's not practical to list every single task 
that could be completed on the job site as a predefined task. Um, and this, in or as such, if there is the other field present and filled out, this needs to be appended with the predefined or inserted into the predefined. Uh, so now, the FME's workspaces. The FME process was categorized into two workflows, an initial process and an iterative process. The initial workflow can be broken down into two core themes, altering of the schema and merging of geometries. The initial workflow extracts the source data from the ArcGIS Online repository, and through some altering of attributes, the schema the client desired can be created. This schema is created through the addition and removal of attributes. This starts with the removal of the object ID that is generated by default in ArcGIS applications. A parent row ID is also created to be used with merging the different forms together. <clears throat> this parent row ID is crucial to the merging of geometries that must be performed. The reason for this merging is due to the survey and the site locations not necessarily being tied together. The location of each feature is tied to where the feature was inserted and completed, basically where the f ever the survey was filled out. <clears throat> As such, a feature could be inserted when not at the current job site. I could be filling out a form at home, but referring to task completed at job site B, say in Surrey. Therefore, the merging of the geometries with the established site features table allows the user to maintain the spatial integrity on the data. At the culmination of the initial workspace, that data is loaded, loaded into a file geo database which forms the base master repository. The second workspace is the translation that takes the base file geo database, which we previously just created, and performs the final transformation to the data so it can be QC'd before implementation into the master repository. This workflow is broken down into three separate transformations, string formatting, date formatting, and the cost material generation. The string formatting process starts with the tasks and the presence of the other field. Currently, there are three different conditions that are tested for with each feature, whether the tasks are predefined only, predefined and other, or just the other task. Now, this is carried out through the tester transformer to test each condition. This is because due to the presence of a other field, if there are predefined tasks and another field selected, these two need to be appended together. While if there's only, if there's only, a pre, if there's no predefined task, then the other field needs to be inserted into the task section. The second process involved date formatting. As I mentioned earlier, due to collecting data via smartphones, in order to, preve in order to prevent user frustration and to try and maintain da data integrity, the date and times were separated into three fields. These need to be brought back together through the use of the attribute value mapper to combine the fields as well as map them to their correct values, the 15 minute intervals I mentioned. This results in a date time that are correctly formatted and usable in both Excel and Esri date times formats. Along, along with providing the, the data with an understandable reference of which work was completed by whom and on each day. The last process carried out in the iterative workflow is the generation and calculation of the materials used on each day at each job site. This is taken from the unit cost, the type of material, and the quantity of said material. Through combining these into the attribute manager, Jeff was able to display the cost of work performed at each job site on any given day. All that remains of this workspace is to load or write the data into the final outputs, the master repository in the form of a file geo database, and an Excel sheet which helps form business decisions that affect day-to-day -day operations. Currently, this is where FME's job in this system concludes. As the, client current, as the client's current QC procedure is an internal process utilizing Power Query via and ArcGIS Pro for edits, they follow a cyclical process of validating the data, notifying employees of errors, and making edits. This is carried out repeatedly until the data is 100% compliant to their internal standards. At the culmination of this project, the client had a master data repository that is continuously updated and altered to ensure 100% data integrity in the form of a file geo database and ArcGIS Online, and an Excel file which could be located, lo loaded into Microsoft Power BI for data visualization and analysis to better inform the day-to-day -day operations and business decisions as a whole. That being said, there's still a great deal of potential that FME can provide when looking at new and current systems within one's workplace. This can be witnessed within this very project. The goal of any project at the conclusion is how do I make it better? How do I simplify the process? This is where FME can reduce 
the redundancy that may currently be present in a project, such as the QAQC process. It is hoped that as the consultant's knowledge and experience with FME grows, that FME could replace the client's current QA procedures. By integrating FME into the QC process, the monitoring and logging of incorrect features could be greatly increased, while also reducing the overall employee workload. This would add a level of automation to the QA process, rather than having to do it manually through Power Query, thus promoting a high degree of efficiency while also maintaining the current QC protocols. Through the integration of FME, Jeff Purig was able to develop a workflow that could be integrated with the client's QA process. This enabled the entire system to be carried out together, different moving parts, but a fluent motion nonetheless. To conclude, when dealing with the complex nature of data formats, both spatially and non-spatially, it can often be difficult to navigate the path of least resistance. Often the question boils down to how do I get from here to there? Going back to Thomas Edison, there's a better way, find it. The question should be how do I get from here to there with as little effort as possible, but with as maximum efficiency as possible. The answer is FME. Think of FME as the highway that allows data to flow seamlessly from source to destination and you are the driver. Now where are you traveling next? That's the conclusion for that first talk. Any questions? Yeah, and I'm just gonna okay. pretend like there's two separate talks. Okay. So if there's any questions for Trent about that talk, it might be a little tough because it's actually not his um, presentation. It actually came from a customer that is not actually at the UC. Um, so we can do our best to field those questions to the author if it's something very specific. But if there's anything general about that sort of workflow you would like to ask, feel free. And if not, we can move on to our second portion of our all-star world tour stories. <laughs> And Trent will deliver it as well. Yes. But maybe with a different voice. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Is that, that low enough? <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the oh, wow, this is really laggy. Is it focused? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so this second ta uh, talk is more of a like kind of like a demo I'm going to show, and it's referring to Sesavian. Data tasks, uh, basically how to automate FME without server or cloud. So uh, as many of you know, the highlight of FME server cloud is automation. You can you know, have workspace queued up to run at you know, 1 a.m. Oh, that's, okay, that's really laggy. We'll let that catch up for a second. Um, but what author is up at 1 a.m. in the morning and wants to run it manually if you can't afford or do not have server or cloud? Answer is I assume no one. So as such, we want to automate it without the server or the cloud. How, you might be asking, how do we do that? Uh, Windows Task Scheduler, if you're on PC, and I believe there's a similar one for Mac. All, you, all that requires is a bat file, which is batch file if any of you don't know that, and a Windows, ta and Windows Task Manager or a Scheduler. So all, all that is required of you is you create your workspace as you normally would, and uh, save it as you normally would, make sure it runs, you can you know, do a test run, and then you would open a text, text file, um, and you would write the path to your um, FME instance, um, not the workbench, just the FME engine, uh, and then the workspace file. You just save that as a .bat file, and then you would open it, so that's what a bat file looks like, for example. So you have your uh, FME engine on the left side, and on the right side is your workspace. Uh, after that, you just save that as a .bat file, as I mentioned, and then you would open Task Scheduler. There we go. Um, and here is where, in this instance, the user has a bunch of, at the very top, you can see a bunch of uh, processes that, that are set up to schedule, or a bunch of scheduled tasks set up to run once they hit their designated time. Um, for, uh, it's pretty standard GUI to navigate in terms of uh, you just point to the file, you set the trigger you want, whether it's time day, and whether or not that time is daily, hourly, weekly, monthly. Um, and then uh, barring any complications, uh, it should run, ideally. Isn't that always the case? Um, now, there are some issues that need to be noted when uh, using Windows Task Scheduler, is that all connections uh, for SDEs must be local. Uh, your FME must be local and you need to ensure that the reader and writers have the uh, correct permissions as the uh, scheduler is set up. So you can schedule it as an admin or just an individual user. Um, 
that's about it for that one. That one's kind of basic. So I'd like to say thanks to, uh, to Jeff and Michael for their allowing, allowing us to talk about their projects. From the demoing I was doing and testing with it, um, as it was good to get a test run of the workspace to ensure the workspace fl uh, runs correctly. And um, as long as it runs correctly, any issue that you have after that is generally tied to the task scheduler is what I've found. Mm -hmm. um, now that was very preliminary testing and nothing advanced. I did not do any advanced um, workspaces. Um, there is a, a, um, a notification that is tied to each task after it's run that you can check and it'll tell you generally what the error it generally what the error is now if it's an FME error it will not tell you that it just tells you whether it ran correctly or if there was incorrect permissions mm -hmm. things like that so what's a good way to FME server. Uh, yeah FME <laughs> server or you can like if there's an FME error you can check a log is still created so you can still check the log yeah yeah that's actually I guess that's sort of like task scheduler is really, really good for if you have like one specific task and you're kind of not dependent on some other trigger, like a external trigger, for example, like event driven stuff. So task scheduler can work for that, but like where FME server and FME cloud come into play. So like if you were, if you had an um, event driven workspace, say um, I'll use sewers as an example, like they, it had really heavy rain flow. You want that workspace to be triggered by a certain um, a data point, then you can send that off. And then the errors, if anything goes wrong, it's easy to submit that data. The FME log is a very specific error message by text, email, whatever you want. So that's kind of where FME server and task scheduler kind of part ways is there's just a bit more um, automation and a bit more um, control over that sort of thing versus task scheduler. But they can work, um, both of them can work. It just depends on like what you're looking for, if that makes sense. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.